What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Best Show Ever pod. I'm Cam Hurt. I'm your host. Um, and I'm interviewing people about the best concerts they ever saw in their life. Uh, this week is a really cool one um, with a really cool guy. A guy who has been a part of the Osiris Media uh, conglomerate for a while here. Um, he runs one of the most successful podcasts that they have. One of my favorite podcasts of all podcasts, truly. Um, is Aaron from No Simple Road this week. Uh, and he's just the best guy. Man, I got to meet him at Hollywood Bowl uh, back in the spring and didn't didn't know he was sitting behind me. We exchanged stickers and he was like the nicest guy. And then I ended up getting to hang out with him at Dick's uh, recently. I'm, I'm recording the intro and outro way later than the episode. And so in the episode, you know, there will be no Dick's talk. There will be no anything like that. Um, just didn't do the intros and outros, guys. That's just you're getting to peek behind the curtain here a little bit. Um, but Aaron was so awesome. I was so happy to get another chance to see him out in Colorado recently. Um, I'm going up to Portland soon and I hope to get to hang out with him again, but that's, a, a, you get to hang out with him right now. Enough intro out of me. Um, let's, let's sit back. Let's relax. Let's listen to this awesome conversation that I have with Aaron from No Simple Road. But first, here's a little bit of music from none other than Jesus and Fartfinger. This is the best show ever. This is the best show ever. This is the best show, the best show ever. This is the best show. The best show I ever heard. I think I have to agree. Me too, but yeah, man. I mean, that was a cool, that was such a cool, I just was like, oh, these guys behind us are really nice. So I'll give them a sticker. And then <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, you can have a sticker too. I'm like, oh shit, you're the No Simple Road guys? And I was like, you're the guy that makes those videos that we were just tripping on like two nights ago? And we were both like, you're the guy. You're the guy. <laughs> At the same time. Yeah, I love Good that. shit, man. That's, that's like the one of my favorite parts of going to shows is that kind of stuff yeah like that's the best yeah running it i mean and finally being able to put a face to uh the handle yeah 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 that it's so funny like people talk a lot of trash about the internet and like the evils of technology and i've done my fair share and i have feelings about it but like <laughs> It's really cool too, man. It, it is. It's super cool. I, you know, um, in comedy, obviously people use that to their advantage. They use social media and stuff to their advantage. And I have also been like, man, everybody who's talented doesn't do anything on stage anymore. They just look into their phone and they make a little video. And um, it, it's also pretty, it's a pretty beautiful way to get your, your stuff across. And yeah pretty cool way to find community and i mean yeah luckily uh, luckily for me like tiktok and instagram does a good job of just like putting your stuff right in the little area it should go in but, dude the algorithm loves you I, yeah oh yeah the fit the the woke al algorithm whatever yep. the math is for the woke algorithm it's great is, <laughs> is it's fun. it's so weird dude like okay the woke algorithm numbers and how that like I picture like an AI holding an ice cold fatty like, <laughs> at its computer. Like, however that works, I don't understand. Cause like no simple road will post a picture of my coffee cup and it gets like 800 likes and 55 comments. Yeah. I post this week's episode with Dave schools and it's like seven. Oh dude. It does not want you to ever have a thing. Outside. No. <laughs> i'll post get it like a, a like you know yeah a picture of my cat watching the live stream in my bed and it'll be like just streaming or something like that it's like two thousand story views and then it's like coming to my live comedy show where you can see me perform and do the thing that i actually like to do and it's like no one will see that's yeah. that's just how it works i don't get it it's not you're not designed to leave social media you're supposed to stay on it until you die. That's oh, how, 
that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Until I'm doing pass. it wrong. Until you, <laughs> until you pass away in your seat, you're supposed to stay. <laughs> All sticky and weird and gross. Yeah. yeah, got it. It's And it's a beautiful thing, like we said. It's beautiful. Yep, yep. Totally. Um, there would be no no simple road without it. <laughs> that's that's true. Um, what, what's been up, man? Other than no simple road stuff, what's been up? Um, I, nothing. Nice. I'll be honest. Like the line between what my life is and what no simple road is has completely disappeared. There is no. There's no difference. Like every person that I'm friends with is because of the show. Every. <laughs> thing that we do has to do somehow tied in to no simple road like it's just it's our life now which I'll is say, awesome i'll yeah. say this I, I reached out to your actual instagram page and didn't get a response and then i reached out to no simple road i'm like i don't know who this is going to go to and you were like in seconds you're like yeah dude sounds awesome Boom. yeah yeah <laughs> i haven't been on that other instagram forever i think yeah. my dog has more instagram like engagement on his profile than i do um yeah it's it's hard enough to do one brother yeah dude it's it's ridiculous like yeah anyway what we've been up to i mean i still work a day job yeah so I, i've been doing that and uh we just did the oregon country fair which was the single most insane experience i've ever had in my whole life and i've had a lot of weird experiences wow it was the coolest, craziest, weirdest thing I've ever done. Wow, man. For I, real, for real. That's crazy. What I mean, some what are what were some highlights? What would... Um, okay. So Oregon Country Fair has been going on in the forest of Venita, Oregon for 50 years, 53, 52 years. Um, the land that it's on was like part of the Springfield Creamery owned by the Keezys. Um, the parking lot that we parked in is the park is the lot where the Venita shows happened. So there's a lot of like merry prankster, great old head energy yeah. on these grounds. Like people have been having psychedelic experiences in this forest for 52 years. Man. And then for three days in July every year, 20,000 volunteers converge on the forest to build the fourth largest city in Oregon on three days and then dismantle it. Unbelievable. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And, and it's in a three day acid test. Wow, man. So it's still out there. It's that's what I, I had no clue. Like I, I've heard of fair ever since I was on tour with the dead in late eighties, early nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, people would leave tour to go to fair. And I was like, why would you go to a fucking country fair with like rides and, you know, corn dogs and shit? That is not what this is. This yeah. is like a psychedelic get down for three days thrown by the headiest people on the planet that like, dude, there's entire like refrigerated warehouses for people to keep their food in. And like, man, Outdoor showers for 400 people fired by wood with saunas and drying fires. That's like the most beautiful redwood outdoor showering area you've ever seen in your life. And like continual drum circles and LPGO be played and Salise and parades that go nowhere and like grand pianos in the middle of the forest with nobody at them playing in the middle of the night and just it's insane it was the craziest shit ever that sounds like the craziest shit ever you gotta love hippies dude I, whoever said that hippies are unproductive and can't do anything when i was at fair i was like whoever said that they can go fuck themselves because this is like i said the fourth largest city in oregon for three days and then it's completely dismantled not a trace yeah i was gonna say nothing left behind i'm sure like it's 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 the mother of all music festivals and burning man wow yeah you gotta go it's it's a bucket list lifetime experience to go to fair what uh what was the i mean you said it was the headiest people 
of all time was it do you feel like it was like um just old wooks was it like young people was it ki were there families were there what's everything going on? everything families the gamut so like you had your dusty wooks you had your edm kids you had families that have been going to fair like third generation family together hanging out at fair doing their thing um like lp Giobi, her parents have been going to fair for 40 something years she's never missed since she's been in utero wow so just in case you were wondering if she's heady or not dude that girl is so cool ultra. and uh, yeah it's just ultra heady and then um yeah i mean it's for everybody so during the day the public is allowed in fair from 11 a.m to 7 p.m and then there's a crew of folks that volunteer called the sweep team and they come through the entire fair from the top of the fair to the bottom arm in arm at seven o'clock or seven thirty at night and sweep the public out and then the only ones that are left are the people that have these wristbands see i haven't even taken mine off yet so if you have a wristband, you get to stay in fair. And that's when the real like party starts. When on Saturday night, they have a thing called the midnight show at nine o'clock, which I don't <laughs> understand that, but whatever. And, and it's all the entertainment that's been going on around fair on stage for like maybe five minutes a person, you know, a, a group or a juggler or a puppet show or band or whatever because all the volunteers have been working and can't see all the entertainment that's happening and as we were sitting there that's when i like saturday night was when i realized oh my god i'm getting to experience an acid test like this that's what this is it was it was a it was great it wasn't my best show ever okay <laughs> it was awesome okay. again yeah dude what an experience I mean, yeah. and not something that's probably on a lot of people's radars. I'm sure a lot of people who are even really into the dead and really into, you know, g going to these sorts of things, it wasn't on my radar at all. No, if, if you're from back east, I most people haven't heard about it. It is probably the best kept secret in the community. That's why it's still cool. Yeah, it's it's. It it's because i don't know about it go go on our instagram dude after we hang up and i i made a couple of posts like just like carousel um reels of yeah. some of the shit that i saw when i was there that i was like prescient enough to go oh i need to pull my phone out of my pocket and <laughs> video this is <laughs> the rest of the time that wasn't happening and, and and to like make it even cooler and better than that was to be a volunteer or to get a wristband is a thing like it, everybody doesn't get that everybody wants to be a night fair not everybody gets to do it and we got invited by fair wow. podcast like i i was over the moon dude like wow so we were on like the stage next to the keezy stage man as no simple road at oregon country fair with lpgob like my head was just like all started with a little snowball microphone on my porch i was gonna say is it um is it kind of surreal some of the cool stuff i mean obviously that's surreal but you you get to do a bunch of cool stuff with this podcast and i love no simple road dude. thanks man yeah it's it's never not been surreal yeah it has never stopped and and i think if i'm being honest like if it ever does stop being like that i think that we, it's no simple road will start to suck yeah because then i'm like not excited anymore right but this is like all shit that if i went back and told my 18 year old self hey guess what you're gonna get to do later i would have been like no no way dude no that's not gonna happen Thanks. and I, and like I, like that experience at fair i was sitting on the stage like out of my body going this is really happening right now. I can't believe I'm here doing this for this group of people and they give a shit. <laughs> yeah, right. I have anything to say that the three of us have anything to say. You yeah, know, you can, you can do whatever you want whenever you want to, but it's if people do people give a shit. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> totally for real. 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. It never has stopped being surreal. And I think as as No Simple Road grows and the things get bigger, it's getting weirder and weirder and weirder. Yeah. Which I'm all in. Like, let's let's get weird. So yeah, let's get weird. Yeah. Well, let's let's get a little weird and talk about some of your your shows. Um, okay. You've uh, yeah, you've uh, seen some great shows. We've seen a show together. Um, mm -hmm. But um, before we get into like your best shows and your honorable mention shows, I like to start off with your your first and your worst. And sh so, what are your uh, the first concert you ever went to and the worst concert you ever went to? Okay. First concert I ever went to, uh, my mom and dad were divorced. I was growing, I was in fifth grade. Um, I don't know what year this was. Um, you don't got it. Maybe, maybe 82, 83 ish yeah. around there. Uh, and my fifth grade teacher was a dude named Mr. Enomoto. I'm going to give you a whole yeah. story here. Yes, please. And, and my mom, my mom's side of the family is all circus folk. No way. Yeah, way. So <laughs> they the the name of the act is the Flying Cavarettas, and um, they flew on the trapeze at Circus Circus in Las Vegas from like 1969 to 85, right? Dude. Yeah. What and a run. So, right? So <laughs> Enomoto, my teacher, had the hots for my mom. Okay, so uh, he knew that the cars were coming to Vegas and he was teaching me guitar at the time. And like I said, he had the hots for my mom and he told me like, hey, if you want to go see the cars, I'll take you to your to, to the concert. And I remember him coming to pick me up at the house and like trying to get my mom to come with us. Yes. <laughs> but she didn't end up going. Me and him went. And um, yeah, man, it was like the quintessential um, greatest hits of the Cars concert. And I still remember, I think I was whatever fifth grade is, like 10-ish. So that was the first one. It's a great first one. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, from that moment, hooked. I remember like, I wanted to see everything in concert after that, mm. even as a little kid. Do you, um, did you, did you start looking at tours? Were you like, uh, did you know the next band that you wanted to see or was it, you just were like, no, anything? like I loved like, so this, I love sticks. Um, Ted Nugent. I'm a little kid, dude, like fifth grade, yeah. Ted Nugent, ACDC. And, uh, and Zeppelin. And um, at the time, like there wasn't really ways to look up tours. It was like you could hear about bands coming to town on the radio. Yeah. It's kind of how stuff was announced. Um, but yeah, now I started having like my older sister and uncle take me to go to shows and stuff after that. Wow. Okay. Very yeah. cool. See, the other one was the worst show I've ever been to. Yeah. Mm. So I thought about this a little bit in preparation for talking to you. Um, there is only one concert that I have ever like left because it sucked. Wow, so I've, it, um, yeah. I've left a concert at set break because I had to work yeah, or right. like, right. That kind of stuff. Yeah. But but this is the only time like my wife and I looked at each other and went, I'd rather be in traffic, man, than be here, man. Okay, and uh, it was 2018 or 19 here in Portland at Edgefield, which is like a beautiful outdoor venue. Yeah, and we went, and we went to go see Cake. Oh man. It was the worst shit I had. It was, I've never seen a band bored. Oh, yeah. I've, I've been at a show where a band's bored. You, and you can tell. It was pain. And then they were like, it was during, it was 18 because Trump was still president. And they were just like, 
lambasting Portland of like what a shitty town this is and and the people here suck and like they were just like what? talking shit to the audience and people in the audience were just like everybody was kind of astounded and i dude i grew up in that era like the cake was the shit in the day right and of course i went to go see like them do their thing and i was so disappointed it was such a bummer and i remember like my wife was like let's go and i was like I was thinking the same thing and we were walking out and then I looked behind us and like groves, droves of people are just pouring out behind us. Like, man, but and when you, a band's bored, you could feel it. You can totally feel it. You can feel it when any sort of performer on stage would rather be somewhere else. It, you can, you can absolutely tell it sucks to see. And but cakes music is so fun and funky and cool. And you would think that, I don't know. Obviously, nothing's fun to play for a hundred years. We've, you know, but yeah. I don't know, dude. It seems like that would be a pretty fun book of music to get to keep going back to and tour right? with and stuff. I would think the same thing. And like, probably if you're not a comedian, it's probably not a great idea to talk shit to the fans in the city that you're in. Like, oh yeah, probably not smart. So. I, I talk about this on the episode with my dad, but I saw Ringo Starr do this to Milwaukee. Really? He like he was a little like, I can't, I don't like it here. <laughs> he, was like, <laughs> he was like, people were holding up signs. He's like, I can't read your your sign. I don't care. You know, he was like, I he, he really could he didn't like the we were at the Pepsi Theater. It was beautiful. I don't know. It just wow. You know, you, you, even if you are a stand-up, like my least favorite thing that a comedian ever does is like tell a joke and then afterwards be like, you guys didn't really like that one, I guess. Or like, oh, I guess it's a dead mm. dead room. It's like, why don't you shut up and work a little harder? I don't know. Why don't you, <laughs> why don't you be, funny? be funny? Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. And listen, the easiest way to get a crowd on your side, I'm sure, as a musician, is to be like, oh, poor land. Yeah. We love you. Yeah. And then we're in we're we're in i i would imagine being ringo star though you could just be like that like you have more money than god and you are a beetle like fuck everybody at that point oh yeah that's that, that was the vibe it was like it, he was very much like what are you gonna not listen to the beatles of course you're gonna keep listening to the beatles <laughs> yeah just try it pal yeah go for it i don't care yeah yeah that uh, sadly I, I have to say Yep, cake wins the prize for the shittiest show ever, and I've seen some doozies. That that's, was uh, that's really too bad to hear. Cake, you know what? Maybe you got to stay at a different hotel in Portland. Maybe you got to find a different spot. Uh, find a nice area of town with some good coffee. I don't know what the deal is. That's the whole city has good coffee. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get it, man. Well. You don't have to stay on the the negative one. We can move on to your best shows okay. ever. But I know, just like it's probably hard to pick uh, a worst mm. show or or whatever, it it is really hard to pick the best show ever. So, is there are there any shows um, that you would be remiss if you didn't bring up? Um, how on the how, how long do we have, Cam? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you I'll give you five. <laughs> um, I actually I was talking to Apple before we started, and I was like, it's kind of tough, like it's kind of like if you had a bunch of kids like what's your favorite kid it you know, there's just a lot of fun huh. memories you know it's hard um okay i'm gonna give you like this is in no particular order because it, what i've realized thinking about this is every show that i think was great i think it was great for different reasons yeah right um either it was like the people i was with or the drugs i was on or um the way the band was playing that night or the weather or all of it or none of it or whatever it's all these different factors that go into making these memories like favorite memories yeah um and i was talking to apple and and he was like well you're gonna have to say your first grateful dead show and i was like no i that was not the best show ever it was the most terrifying experience of my young life. Yeah. And I got puddled, ditched, and dumped into a 
1989 dead show. It was harrowing as a 18 year old kid. I didn't know what was happening. Where was so that no, show? Uh, at the forum in LA. Wow. And like, yeah, man, I, I had no frame of reference for what the Grateful Dead was. Like I knew trucking yeah. and I walked into the middle of like the most banging stranger ever with my head melting and I'd never seen people dancing at a concert before and yeah it was terrifying like my ego was dissolving yeah. in front of everybody and Jerry is singing everything that's happening in my head yeah maybe had yeah, just no. a little too much a little too fast yeah it was, it was a lot but when when it was over I was like I'm never leaving yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> You guys are gonna have to kill me to get rid of me. I'm was there a time. was there a point in that show where you remember that happening? Where you where that took over? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was at the end, actually. Sadly, um, I don't really. Re I remember walking into the feel like stranger, and the spinners were all in the hall, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Like I couldn't navigate the hallway. And then once I got into the forum, I wanted to leave, but I couldn't figure out how to get out because there was too many people spinning. Yeah. And but after that, I have no memory of the show until the very end. And Jerry saying it's all over now, baby blue. Mm. And I was done. Yeah. I it was like everything's going to be OK. First of all, he's telling me I'm fine. Yeah. It's all good. You made it. And holy shit what just happened i'm coming tomorrow night like they are, yeah, yeah. I, the dead is the originator of, of so much of the stuff that we like but they are truly the originator originator of uh letting the whole crowd know they're gonna be okay you know like oh, anyone dude, everyone in that building that was feeling the same way you were probably also went through that with you you know like hair is standing up on my arms man just like i can feel that feeling of it's, it sounds so stupid, but like there was a real thing, like a real Jerry's um, presence. Yeah. Was a real, like, visceral thing. Yeah. And it really did feel like he was singing right to you. Man. It was bananas. And I, I've only experienced that a handful of times since then you know, m with them and, and other bands, but like, yeah, there was something obviously very special there and I can still feel it, you know, 30, whatever years later. God, if, if every, if that's just number one of your, we're going to be on this, we're going to be, this will be a three hour episode. Okay. We're going to okay, be talking okay. for a while. This is going to be great. I got another one. Okay. Um, so my first fish show was in 94 at, in Olympia, Washington at, at the college. And um, I had toured with the dead by then. I kind of knew the ropes a little bit. I was still young, uh, hated it. I hated the entire show. Really? Never got into it. Oh, dude, it was, I was like, these lyrics suck. Yeah. They're just noodling. The music's kind of lame. I, I don't know what was wrong with me. Anyway, never saw another fish show again until 2015. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then look, look there. It, yeah. So okay. uh yeah, they we went to Fare Thee Well and I was like, okay, you know, if, if Bobby and, and the guys think that Trey's cool, I'm gonna give him a chance. Yeah. And we went to Fare Thee Well and I was blown away by Trey and me and Apple um after I was like, they're playing at the forum in LA and we should go. And he was like, all right, I'll, we'll go. And uh, I took a big handful of mushrooms that night. And I got uh, my friend, my friend, a Karini, a Yem, a Slave to the Traffic Light, and uh, I think a Divided Sky that night. Nice. And I, I, when the show ended, I looked at Apple and I was like, we fucking blew it. And he was like, what? I was like, <laughs> we missed 30 years of this shit dude and he's like ah it's cool now we can catch up that's the right that's the right attitude apple it really is yeah 
I'm sure I'm sure that they're listen, there's a lot of people who still have not come to that realization. And you could just be still living in the time where you don't see fish or, you know, or are still being a curmudgeon about it. But I also you're not the only person who listened to fish one time and was like, the lyrics are weird and that it's noodling. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's very strange now looking back. I'm like, how did I not hear this? It's, was there a level of like the, well it's so clearly not the grateful dead you know there's comparisons of of course but like it's not the grateful Dead. the lyrics it, the music is not the lyrics are not the band is not but was there a level of like i'm not going to let this take over for the grateful dead in your mind i think for me it was more being a dusty old crusty head and being like it's not the dead yeah. if it's not the dead it's not music man like, yeah, man. It's not Jerry. Not Jerry, man. Because I, I was, I was very, very guilty of being one of those people. Really, until um, we started No Simple Road. I, I understand how it could be that way. I mean, I, if if there was someone who, like, let's say, you know, I'm such a big Trey fan, and he is so um, instrumental in who I am as a comedian and like, uh, the way he does things is exactly how I would like to do things. And so if, and I love seeing him live and all that stuff. And if he was taken away from me in the blink of an eye, and then all of a sudden there's this new dude with this new band, I'd be like, no, I don't care about this. So in a, I (laughs) completely get it, you know, like, yeah, it was just, but I, in, in hindsight, in retrospect, I was extremely um, close-minded, just painfully closed off to the wider scope of music. And and really, like, I, I actually told this story yesterday on another podcast, but, like, you're going to laugh. The band that did it for me that, like, oh, there's bigger music out there besides Fish and the Dead was Pigeons playing ping pong. PP, baby. <laughs> yeah of course i went i they were coming to town we have two friends that like love them and they're like you guys come in the show i'm like i don't know man like, you know, it's friday i just got off work kind of on the fence and he was like brother get off the fucking fence and come fly with the flock and i was like all right we'll go and that whatever that night like my head exploded with oh my god i've been missing so much music like these guys are phenomenally talented and they take so much shit online and they're so good and like yeah that started me like digging into all these other amazing bands that are out there now that's quite the pitch you know how could you not go with that get off the fence and fly fly with the flock right i'd I'd be in my car driving down there right then (laughs) yeah in that moment my pigeon costume on. Yeah. yeah um so yeah 2015 at, at uh, or no yeah 2015 july 2015 at the la forum fish and then i have another one another fish show yeah um so my wife and i have been married now for 25 years and the entire time up until this point that i'm about to tell you about was me dragging her to shows and being like, this is the coolest thing ever. And her being like, yeah, it's great, whatever, I don't care. (laughs) And then like me dragging her to another show and she'd be like, it was fun. I had fun hanging out with everybody but the music was just meh. And I was like, but when Apple and I went and saw Fish, when the show ended and we were talking, I was like, we need to bring Mel to a show. This is gonna be her shit. And uh, so in 18, Fish played the gorge here. Nice. And we had, we could only get tickets for one night. And we went up and camped. And um, thanks to some really great liquid, the beginning of the show, their party time. And my wife just takes off into the crowd at the gorge. And I was like, what is happening right now? Oh, no. And yeah, it was great. It was great. And, uh, run like an antelope yeah um, divided sky at sunset uh a golden age jam that was like next level uh a caspian 
and um something else but during caspian she turned around and looked at me and was like i get it yeah and apple snapped a picture it's actually a picture of it on the wall there's a picture of her like with her arms around me like facing me and my arms are up in the air like this like fucking finally yeah <laughs> so like since that day i think mel and i've been to like 35 fish shows together did mexico last year we're doing it again this year like it's her shit now yeah best 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 one of the best nights of my life it's it one of those like one of those days one of those shows it just smacks you in the back of the head and you're like right okay and mm -hmm. that th there's there is a lot of fish that's not very serious and doesn't take itself very serious so it's like why would i take it seriously then um very because good. it's it's really goofy and you're talking about sky balls and sex scrapers or whatever the hell's going on and right. um but like divided sky pretty pretty holy moment you know in a divided sky or like golden age golden age that's a that's a party and you can get you can get in you can get into that and then like prince caspian that's yeah that's such a it's so <laughs> epic the way it builds at the end uh and everyone's singing along even if you don't know fish or it's your first fish show you're singing along at the end of that song and the whole cr i mean i don't gotta tell dude, you dude <laughs> i tears just like streaming down my face and I, I don't know if i've said this anywhere in public like on a show or anything but we were on Osiris then, right? And I was having like this big trippy realization during the show. I'm like, oh my God, like we're a part of this because we're, part, yeah. you know, like Tom Marshall's the head of the, the thing. And like, yeah. we, we're, oh my God, we're part of this thing. And embarrassing aside. So the next morning we, had to leave because we didn't have tickets and we came back to portland and i'm like in the afterglow of this like mountaintop experience sitting on the porch and the glow the evening sun is going down and i'm like i'm gonna send tom marshall an email tell him how awesome he is <laughs> and i did i fucking fanboy emailed tom marshall and told him that i lost my deadhead status that night and became a music fan because of his music that yeah. he'd written and just like poured out this heart wrenching long ass fucking tome of an email to tom and then woke up the next day and was like oh my god what, what did i do, I do? <laughs> you basically you basically uh you're like email tom you're like you up yeah <laughs> it was happening buddy you, you you up i gotta talk to you about some stuff <laughs> about how you're the greatest dude you guys rule man do you guys know you're cool i just want to tell you you're cool they are cool. Yeah. They're the most they, cool, uncool dudes I've ever seen in my life. They're so they make cool. me feel so good about being a nerd. And like this is what I always say about Trey, at least. He is the classiest human being on the planet. I want to be, I strive to be classy like Trey. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to get to before a little bit is just the way that he exudes joy and is also um i mean he fully embodies uh ha having joy in what you're doing um unlike any other artist i feel like i've ever seen and he's also yeah he's just a class act dude he's just with, with that little girl on the stage like singing with him and yeah all the stuff the the water wheel and like giving back and creating a, a treatment facility and all of it man like and i i have my struggles with opiates back in the day too mm -hmm. and almost didn't make it and so having that in common with him and seeing how he's navigated that and just like bounced back to being 10,000 times better than he was ever before is just like so inspiring as somebody that deals with that too He's and he really um, does the work. He really absolutely does. I mean, um, th it's not fake the effort that he puts in. It's not contrived um, for mm -hmm. the community. It's real um, and it comes from his real life. And man, what an example of 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 how to be and who to be. You know, you can it, it so many people went through a tough road 
um, in their life. I, you know, in my family, we have dealt with that as well. And um, he is just such an example of how you can, you're more than that. You're so much more than that. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I, uh, I wish that I had known that then, you know what I mean? It, it would have, it would have made a difference. And I, and I think that having an example like that now, especially with all the stuff that's going on with that in the country at the moment is super important to have yeah. like public figures that are healthy and of in their right space and like showing that you can do awesome shit if you get your stuff together. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, I feel like we um, we we all fully appreciate Trey. We all love uh, the the face melting that he does for us, but yes. um, he doesn't always get the full appreciation for all of the cool stuff that he does. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. Yeah, cool guy. There was a, there was a moment at Climate Pledge in April that like, I mean, who knows? Nobody knows the shit. It, uh, if Jerry would have lived and gotten you know clean or whatever, who knows? but uh i had a moment like they're in the middle of like some crazy jam i don't remember what it was and i was like oh my gosh this is like the level of playing we would have experienced from jerry if if he had gotten clean and yeah. got his shit together and been able to like properly channel what was trying to come through him this yeah. is where we would have gotten and wow what a gift that this is part of that tree that family tree you know it's such a good way to put that too about him you know it, I, I feel like a lot of that is like to channel anything to come through to you guys i have to you know um i have to put myself in the state that i have to put myself um when i'm not up here on stage um but mm -hmm. like yeah uh it's a cool it's a cool reminder from trey that it's like you yourself are the channel it's not all that stuff it's not it's not what you're right. doing um and yeah oh boy oh Dope. boy really yeah. cool man really cool. uh okay well, one more one mm. more not not a fish show okay um i had never seen um string cheese before and yes. uh there's an outdoor amphitheater here in eugene called the cuthbert amphitheater it's not very big and it's a beautiful like the back of the amphitheater is all grass and super cool and it's own like the people that run it is keezy enterprises so it's all heady folk that run the joint and um it's a uh, it was just super rad so before the show we got to go interview jason hahn and like sit in the the little backstage area and talk to jason and then um when we were he, when he had come in like they had had some problem at sound check and uh he was a little upset he wasn't in a great mood and you could tell that he was like "Fuck, i have to do an interview and there's like three people in here and like you know what i mean you could yeah feel like the fucking fuck and uh when it was over when the interview was over he grabbed me and he looked at me he was like i just want you guys to know man like I was having a really bad day and you guys totally turned it around for me. Thank you so much for this conversation. This was so fun. I hope you guys have a blast at the show tonight. And uh, so we're at the show and the sun has gone down. It's second set, like middle of the second set and it's pouring rain. Like, but like summertime, hot, Oregon, beautiful pouring rain. Yeah. and the lights are like shining through the rain that's falling yeah and cheese is just peeking in a jam and i thought oh my god we had something to do with jason han's attitude today yeah and like all this shit converged into this moment of like the weather's perfect the music's amazing the rain feels great on my skin I have my shoes off and I'm dancing in the grass in Oregon yeah. in the summertime with my family to string cheese. Like this is the best night of my life right now. And uh, so when like, cause people do ask, what's your favorite show you've ever been to? Like, obviously yeah. that's yeah. usually, that's usually the first one that I'm like string cheese, Cuthbert amphitheater dancing in the rain, best night of my life ever. 
best Damn. show ever. Such a cool moment. Yeah. Such a cool moment to be within it, you know, and be, you know, like you said, a part of the band's experience that day. Um, but even even outside of that with your podcast, like you just being there with your family um, and and enjoying it, you're, you're being within it, you know? And so that's oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. And I had no, like, obviously I'd listened to bootlegs of cheese and I'd heard cheese on nugs and, and studio albums and stuff, but I didn't, I had never been to a cheese show. I didn't know. And, uh, out of all the music that I've seen since the dead, I think that cheese does the best representation and carries the torch closest to the energy that the grateful dead created when they were, um, doing what they did that the the love vibe at a cheese yeah. show is is a real thing like fish i'm getting joy at a yeah. fish right like yeah, a yeah. fire hose of joy coming from the stage <laughs> but at cheese you could feel that love like that family heady love going around and and it feels like an old school grateful dead thing so i think that maybe like had something to do with that too and i can't wait we're going to see him two nights next week at that same venue no expectation but i'm looking forward to it <laughs> really nice yeah and that's and that's a that's a point well made that there is a distinction between you know when people are like it's not the same experience at fish that it was at grateful dead i think sometimes fish fans will take offense to that and be like well there you know there, it's great and it's happy and it's all this it's like well there's a difference there's a little difference between the joy and and that that heady family love that you were talking about it's not bad just different, mm. you know. no man it's it look that's why there's different kinds of soup and different kinds of cereal and different kinds of yeah. tobacco and different kinds of coffee and yeah. it's all good shit it's just what flavor do you like man yeah no one's wrong no no take no it easy wrong. well uh, except for all the people that like don't like fish they're all wrong I they're wrong, wrong. <laughs> also if you like that cake show back in the day you're wrong. yeah you were fucking wrong yeah. all right last one honorable mention okay um always loved radiohead i've always yeah been one of my favorite bands forever like um in rainbows kid a like some of the best yeah. shit ever um they played here at the moda center I can't remember if it was 2018 or 2019. Um, and I was like, hey, Lou, yeah, let's, let's go see Radiohead. Like, not knowing like what I was going to experience. And uh, they had some like noise band open for them that night. Like painful noise band yeah. open for them. And we had taken some MDMA and sure. we were starting to come on. And this noise band is playing and i'm like this fucking sucks this is awful what are they doing <laughs> and uh then they leave and a little break happens and i'm now i'm like high really really high and the lights go out in the motor center and it gets silent and i'm like what's happening and then lights like emerge on the stage like like a nebula being born on the stage like boom and they start going into um uh, one of the songs off the moon shape pool i can't remember which song it was uh but it was like one of the single most beautiful musical things i had ever seen like i get choked up thinking about it how amazing what they were creating and what was starting to happen was and <clears throat> by the middle of the show you could feel the energy that they were creating on the stage like like a huge ball and it would go around the moda center's round and it would go around the crowd in the moda center and then back to the stage and then transform and go around the moda center through everybody and back to the stage wow. and, transform. and it was like one of the most amazing mind-blowing like moments i've ever had and it was me mel and apple and and we were like oh my god tom york is a shaman like yeah that what he's doing is not that's not a musician he's like invoking something happening yeah. here through sound and 
when the show was over <clears throat> i couldn't i couldn't even like get up to leave when it ended so they yeah like they ended the show that night with creep and we've all heard creep a million times like sure i know that song i play it on my guitar i sing it whatever yeah i had never heard that song before right i they're playing creep and i look around and there's a like literally this is a real thing like a monk a buddhist monk in his monk garb like singing creep and there's like a young trans kid singing creep and there's me oh. this old head singing creep and there's my wife who's this puerto rican girl singing creep and you know this whole um set venue is all of us just completely different singing the song together and i was like i'm done so when it when the show ended i'm just like floored in my seat like security had to tell us you guys have to go home now <laughs> like i know okay just give me a second that's the best that is the best feeling in the world by the mm -hmm. way yeah of that like you're just like surveying the venue maybe the people who you're with are like do you want to head out you're like yeah yeah mm -hmm. just nope give me mm -hmm. a second here mm -hmm. yeah like i the thought of standing up and walking seemed profane <laughs> like yeah. i need to sit here and just be in this whatever this is that we just all made together for a little while longer and it's really cool apple is really great at snapping pictures at moments that are amazing like the one at the gorge of me and mel and then he also got one that when we were leaving it was basically empty there's barely anybody left in the moda center and all the lights were on and we were like at the end of one of the tunnels going that leads in so we were like at the end and he was back at the back of it so you just see our silhouettes and like the inside of the smoky venue and he got a shot of us from like behind with her head on my shoulder like it's hanging in our bedroom are you guys uh, are you guys paying him there's couples who pay a lot of money for these couples photographers to come right through and and Dude, get pictures of i've them. paid him with 40 years of friendship that's right <laughs> okay that's true <laughs> and yeah, hopefully man. shared a little of the molly that night or, or oh something. yeah yeah no he, he's yeah, he's got cool. his fair share yeah cool, cool. yeah hell yeah oh yeah man. allegedly i've i've never i don't know that that's all just part of the story right right that, no one knows for sure whether that even happened nope mm -mm, i don't even know if that was here this is kind of a fictional podcast to be honest yeah, i'm making it's all shit. yeah <laughs> You yeah, never man. saw Jerry. You never. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> but can I ask you a question? Yeah. as a, as a younger head yeah and i've seen you do bits on it <laughs> is that shit annoying the i saw jerry stuff no that yeah. no i really do love it i really do i love um i love the pride that someone takes in being like i was there um okay because it i think it is important and i think to keep it going and to keep it important you have to have that you have to, as a young person, you have to be open to making that relationship or that conversation cool, you know, being like uh, I, my, the, the, where this podcast was born out of is, you know, me and my little brother, who you also met at the fish show in Hollywood, he, mm -hmm. he and I go to a lot of shows together and we look young and we, you know, we'll, we'll go just the two of us. And, you know, there's a lot of heads sitting around us, guys who are older than us. Um, and then we'll watch a full first set and we'll be, have been dancing and high-fiving and knowing the lyrics and blah, 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 or whatever. And then always inevitably there's someone at set break that's like, how long you guys been listening to the dead or, you know, whatever it is. And then we ask them, you know, what shows you saw and 
those people are usually so stoked to see me and Kyle getting so stoked about the stories. And so I, I, I want to hear the stories. I want to hear that you're proud that you saw Jerry or you were proud that you're at this show or that show or because it is cool. It's really cool. It's when you, it's when it starts being um, I that I can't like it. Like, what am I? Oh, what yeah. Am I supposed to do? Name <laughs> six songs, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll name the six songs. But are we done after that or what are we? Yeah, right. You know, it's it's a weird thing to like. To be the older guy now because i remember being younger and be coming into the scene and the shade that we got yeah right we were the touch heads and like we were ruining the scene when we yeah. came in like completely fucking things up and we were i mean yeah. it was this niche little cool family thing that was going on and then thousands and thousands of us come in and fucking not knowing our ass from a hole in the ground and right ruining everything and we got a lot of shade and 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 those of us that were doing our best to like learn the rules of the road it hurt and it was yeah. hard we caught a lot of i dude when i after that first show like within a year i had sold everything and was had a school bus and wow was on the road like i i was wow. i was gone yeah and it took it took a good six months of being seen in lot over and over again to start not being fucked with yeah and i i i think that there's a lot less um fucking with young kids or, you know, like outwardly being negative towards younger people at fish shows so um, now, you know, like it's it's so much it's such a different thing than it was. Um, and it it's a more of a family thing. And so you see more younger people now. And it, I think that um, when you're at shows, and I talk about this with other people on the show that, you know, like you, you don't really meet the shitty people at no. shows. The, the people who are at the shows are excited and they're happy and they're, they're excited. You're there too. And, um, for the most part, all the shitty people live online and they're not at the show. They're, yeah. they're bitter and at home. So it's, it's no big Stay deal up. when I'm there, you know? Yeah. The, it's a very, it's a weird thing too, though. Like, um, we were at, uh, when we first moved up here, dead and company played shoreline Apple and I flew down and it was just him and I, and like we were in the lawn up at Shoreline, and it like it started getting really packed, and uh, we had like this bubble of space around us, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And like some young dudes came up, this this guy and his girlfriend, maybe in their mid twenties, and they were like, "Is it cool if we like put our blanket by you guys?" And I was like, "Oh, we're the older guys." like oh man there what <laughs> and it that was a cool like realization moment and then also so like they were being so so respectful like who am i With, yeah put your blanket down man you know what i mean like but I, that's why i think that it's it's okay and it, it, it there's a generational thing that happens and there's so much respect on both sides for the music and the scene and the community yeah. and the people that are in it are like you said, we're there to have a good time. I'm not there to like, have you seen Jerry name you six songs? What do you know the lyrics to this? Like yeah. I just went the other night, saw the disco biscuits for the very first time ever. I'm 51 years old. There was a guy there that was like maybe in his thirties dancing back where we were dancing. And he was like, um, is this your, is this your first show on the tour? I was like, no dude, this is my first biscuit show. And the dude proceeded to like give me a tour of the show that whole night, just like telling me what the song names were. This is the seventeenth time they've played it since. Da, 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 you know, like nice. the whole, that's what it's about: sharing yeah. the experience with each other. Otherwise, the thing, the whole thing implodes on itself, and there's a bunch of old people sitting listening to tired ass music. Yeah, totally, and I and I think that we we get a lot of positivity 
um, it's, it's, it's assumed that there's a lot of negativity, but it's really not, it's really not so negative. And, and honestly, you know, like when, you know, Kyle and I are getting excited about a song that's getting played and we're high-fiving and then, you know, the older head that's been sitting in front of us the whole show that we can't really tell his vibe or not turns around and gives us a high five. We're like, Oh, now it's extra heady. Now yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. if that guy's, if that guy's getting down, then we're getting a good one, you know? And like, so yeah, I love it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And, and we have to like, we have to pass on, I'm speaking as an older guy now, like we have to pass on the, the stuff that we've learned on like etiquette of how to take care of each other and look out for each other at shows. And like, we have to pass on the the knowledge of kindness and community and being there for the music and and taking care of each other we have to pass all that on because that's that stuff is hard learn lessons from doing the thing for a long long time and you just you, you know stuff now because you've done it a lot that's you're not cooler than anybody else you just happen to sit here longer that's right. <laughs> you did. That's your accomplishment. So share what you've learned with the people that are coming up after you so that they don't have to go through the same pitfalls and struggles that you did. Maybe they can avoid some of them. And then what it does is it elevates the vibe of the whole scene. And we're just totally. having better experiences. Right. So. And just as a as an older head, just like when you were younger and you know, finding yourself and becoming yourself at these shows. So there are still young people doing that. Like I learn so much about myself at these shows and um over the last 10 years of of seeing a lot of shows like i yeah i've learned a lot about myself and became more myself at the shows and so yeah don't get in the way of that no man don't, and don't interrupt that it, tell me if you can what's better what's a better sight than seeing somebody that you know finally get it like, oh yeah come on man Dude. or seeing yeah. somebody like truly get down for the first time yeah like when they finally figure out that it's okay yeah <laughs> it's like i want to facilitate that as best i can i want to be like right this way <laughs> this way not too much of this not too yeah. much of that do a little of this here's the song you're on your way yes man i i want to see that all the time because all it does is make me feel amazing and that's yeah. the goal right is to have fun yeah and it's it's your experience but it's also so much bigger than you so if you're out there gatekeeping the experience dude it's way bigger than you dude <laughs> yeah good luck good luck yeah right this, this thing this thing i've noticed will like um through doing no simple road i've really seen the um reality behind uh if you're doing it with love and good intention and passion for the thing it gives back to you yeah and then i've also seen the reverse of that where like you're doing it just for the money or to be cool or to get famous watch what's going to happen this thing is like a it's alive it's got a lot of yeah time and intention and energy poured into it and like be careful <laughs> yeah right yeah it's just like anything else you can do it for good you can do it for bad um and the the results will be exactly what you put into it so yep yep and, but it is the coolest shit ever and i uh yeah it hasn't it hasn't gotten old boring or repetitive in 30 whatever years and and it's only getting more interesting as i get older that's good to hear that makes me feel good because yeah. like, we we spend a lot of time as young fans thinking that we missed all the best everything you know nope. but I, I i fully feel like it's still unfolding in front of us for like fish and for other bands you know cam look at goose that's that's like my yes. object lesson for it's getting better yeah look at the like the bell curve of goose yeah if that's what we're working with now we don't even know like right it's on yeah people are doing it so well right now and so people fast. have really yeah and so fast i mean bands like like billy strings and his band and you know king giz is a completely different um 
uh, area and they don't really come from the jam scene, but the, the way that they've adopted it has just been so cool. There, there's just, there's so much cool stuff to find and people doing it really, really well right now that yep. we're going to be good for a long time. Yep. I'm not, I'm not worried. I, I, I used to like when I wasn't listening to, you know, a lot of stuff, I'd be like, well, when J rad stops playing, that's, that's going to be it, you know? And, yeah. and now I'm like, bring it on, man. Let's see all of all the, you know, I want to see all the up and coming bands. I want to see it all. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. It's a way more fun mindset to come from than we've got nothing left. That'd be sucks. a drag <laughs> stick in the mud. It sucks so bad. Well, I mean, do you have a best show that you've ever seen? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I do. yeah, you do. Yeah. But, uh, for 21 of last year, I think at the garden was that wow. last year the fish yeah that was last year with the whales yep that, that was dude that was the best shit I've, that was the best show my wife got us new year's tickets for my 50th birthday and they canceled the new year's show because yep. of covid right. and i was i have never been that like rushed over like, something getting canceled as like fish new year's for my 50th birthday i was just like dis Dude. crushed and uh so we went in april and we got like the best hotel right around the corner from the venue and with the coolest room with the most comfortable bed and and walking distance from msg and i'd never been to new york city before and i'd never been to msg obviously and it was i think it was the second or third night so i was like really well marinated by that point and when those whales came out i didn't know if it was a hologram i didn't know if it was a balloon i didn't know if it was really there yeah and and just the thought of like these guys just turned msg into the ocean yeah it was the best musical moment of m my life like as far as like um theatrics and set and setting and me and my wife and the trip and all of it together like best shit ever i i can't even like nothing will come close to that ever even we went to mexico last year which was amazing um i told when on the last day i stopped her i'm like look we're coming back next year and she was like i can't can't say that now and i said no 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 we're never missing this again pinky promise that you won't give me shit when i book this next year <laughs> so like, <laughs> even that even that like pales in comparison to having whales and dolphins show up in your show yeah i, I mean first of all that a uh, picture from that show is still the background of my phone and i was not there so mm -hmm. it, it, it was epic to see not even being there. But yeah, I, they just have unlimited fun. They have so much fun in that building. And you're always like, how are they going to even top the stuff that they've done in the past? And it's every time it's just unbelievable the stuff they're able to pull off and the cool people they work with to pull it off. And man. So have you heard about the sphere? Yeah. In Vegas? Yeah. I can't wait. What is that? What is a ticket to that going to be? Ten thousand dollars? I pay anything. Uh, yeah, I I'll kill somebody to get in there. And right. Bury the body on my friend's land. Like I I please. After we're done, when you have a few minutes, have you been to the website for the sphere? I haven't. No, I've just seen the all the videos that people have posted. Go to the website. Yeah. Go to the website and go down the rabbit hole of this thing. They can like change the temperature inside the sphere by 40 degrees in 10 seconds <laughs> they can what? <clears throat> yeah they can pump smell into the like if they're showing like a movie in there about a field of flowers they can pump 
flower smell in the room. There's 160,000 individual speakers inside the sphere. Oh my God. They can target sound. So like if you and I are sitting next to each other, they can target sound at you and I won't hear it. No way. Way. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. What is this? Was, was this place built for Trey? Like, yeah, right. Gonna have, they're going to have so much fun in that place. So I'm going to say uh, my best show ever was when Fish played the Sphere. Right. Yeah. So sick, dude. Yeah. <laughs> when they played the Sphere in the future. <laughs> and it was we were so there. awesome. It was so great. <laughs> Yeah, it's so sick. <laughs> go oh, seriously. Go, go to the website. You, you, like, it's a whole rabbit hole of math and science and cool shit. And yeah, when I can't wait. I, I'm not even a U2 fan. I would love to go see U2 there. Yeah, I would see whatever there. I, I have not seen Coldplay. I'll go see Coldplay there. Right. I mean, I'll watch <laughs> them put on a show. I'll, yeah. yeah, I mean, it looks like such a cool environment to to be at. I, I typically love a venue that is like all of my favorite venues that I've ever been to are all um, a place that I feel like hasn't ever changed. Like I love Alpine Valley because mm. um, it feels like it's still exactly how it was in 89. And I yep. loved uh, the Greek theater this spring because it'll like on the outside, it says like renovations done in 1957. And that's it you know like that it has always been the greek theater but that the sphere i'm like yeah i'm cool with the future mm -hmm. we'll do the future it's on when the, and and just have you you've seen like the outside lit up and them putting stuff on it like yeah i just keep picturing like fish donuts bouncing around on the outside of yeah it. it's gonna be oh incredible let's just like keep putting mental energy for a fish halloween or a fish new year's at the sphere so, you know they're licking their chops to get into that place it's they, owned by msg dude come on yeah, they want every bit of it mm -hmm. so yep so that's I'm your best show ever is the show that fish will play in the sphere in the future but outside of that the whale show at whale MSG, show, msg is a decent is a decent 1a you mm -hmm. know yeah and, and and like musically speaking for in, in the fish catalog of live shit it was it was a good show it wasn't like that was the best fish ever it yeah had nothing to do with that it was the whole thing yeah it's a, it's of course a solid fish show it's got a lot of cool stuff to listen back to it's not like monumental but and by set list means but um kind of hard to have seen a cooler presentation from those boys mm -hmm. close second would be the sci-fi soldier but yeah that was the coolest oh show. man I feel like my whole every episode I'm being made to admit that I haven't been to MSG yet. I think I, almost in every single episode <laughs> of this podcast. That I'm was like, me yeah. till last year, dude. So it's fair. Yeah. It's, I mean, that makes me feel better because it's been around. But I, I every year when they're at MSG, you know, me and my friends will be watching it and we'll, you know, immediately text each other and be like, we're going this year. This is the year we're going. And obviously it hasn't come to fruition. But where are you? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. All right. In LA. Yeah, it's a it's a hall. It is a hall. Um, I've got buddies that live there now. I've got more buddies that live there now than I ever have. So I maybe would have a place to stay or something, but yeah, it's it's high time for me to get out there. Do it. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for coming on. This is a great conversation. Thanks, um buddy. man, Thanks you had me in had me in tears there for a little bit but um okay. do you have anything that uh is coming up that you're really looking forward to um, um that, you're gonna oh, see? that i'm gonna see yeah the dicks run oh yeah dude and cheese next weekend but the dicks run i'm so excited um we didn't get to do any of the summer tour because we're busy doing no simple road stuff and money and whatever um and we are performing at Ophelia's Electric Soapbox on August 30th with Andy Frasco's World Saving Podcast. Wow. Um, the night before the Dicks run. And our special guest is going to be Chris Pandolfi from the infamous String Dusters. Sick. And Andy is going, I can't say who it is, but trust me when I tell you that his guest is going to blow everybody's minds. So that is, 
That is so sick. Um, it's so sick that you're able to perform at these uh, venues now and, 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 you know, build it around uh, no simple road stuff. It's already a cool weekend for you anyway, but that I'm sure takes it over to the top. Oh my God, dude. Like, yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm really looking forward to going back to Mexico in February because, because Mexico fish is just heaven. It's another one I got to do. I got it. High, high end wookery abounds. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That was the best show ever. That was the best show ever. That was the best show, the best show ever. That was the best show. Man, there was fucked up stuff in there. Yeah, what the fuck was that about? That was some really good music from Jesus and Fartfinger, but also a really good conversation with Aaron from No Simple Road. Uh, I mean, Sharon Jerry stories with me, couldn't be more happy. Sharon Fish stories, couldn't be more happy. I mean, this guy, he has seen some awesome shows. He's doing awesome things. If you meet him in real life, he is an awesome guy. Um, just couldn't be kinder, couldn't be a better example for how you should be within this uh, jam band community. Um, the guy runs a super successful podcast that I hope to emulate in certain ways. Uh, and, and he is not a jerk about it. He's super cool about it. Um, I've been able to bounce questions off him for this and he has been so giving and so kind. Um, no Simple Road is an awesome podcast. You gotta listen to it. If you're not listening to it, um, They've got a bunch of great episodes. You could drop in right now. They've got episodes with Billy Strings and Chris Pandolfi and Bill Walton and I, I, anyone you could mention they've talked to. So um, if you like this stuff, they make good stuff. Check them out. Um, I, I've got a lot more episodes coming out that we're about halfway through now. Um, so we've got more episodes coming. Uh, there's episodes out right now. You can go check those out on YouTube and Instagram and Spotify and Apple Music or, or podcasts, not music. This ain't music, guys. This is podcast. But go check it out wherever you can. Subscribe where you can if you if you feel so inclined. Uh, that helps me out. Review it if you can. That helps me out. Um, and that's free, free to do. Um, guys. That's enough outro. That's enough outro out of me. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, guys, have a great show.